everybody. Here we have this um, bird, which I think one of my um, friends took this picture in Arizona of this bird. She's a very good bird photographer. Her name actually happens to be Pamela Cather, Pamela um, Taylor Cather. She's not a relative, but I guess her husband is somehow related to me. So it's kind of nice that we found each other and she can supply me with some bird photos and I show her what we've painted and it's been kind of fun. I think I've told some of you about it in class. So this is the bird and I did send you a photograph of it so you should have it. Um, I also sent you a photograph of the bird a little larger so that if you printed this on your printer in black and white you would get this. Um, and so then what I did was I put graphite on the back. I just scribbled over the entire bird. If you want to hold it up to a window you can see it better see through the paper and then I put the bird down onto my paper and drew over all the major lines that I wanted to put in there and came up with this drawing hopefully you can see that well and so now we're going to start the process of the painting and um, the, I'm gonna first start with wet on wet up here all the way down to the bottom probably go over his legs and over the reflection a little bit because it's light enough in the photograph that um, you'll be able to paint over his feet and yet still have his feet be darker than the background. So it's okay to get it all wet around him. I'm not gonna get him wet at all, only what's around him. And it's gonna be very wet. So I'll probably get it wet from the top down to about right here first and then start to paint in and then I'll get the rest done. Because if I get the whole thing wet, sometimes the bottom part will start to dry before I get to it and I don't want that to happen. So I have um, a wide selection of brushes here. I won't use all of them, probably end up using two or three. I have my um, water here, which you can see. Yes, it looks like there's two pieces of tape floating in the bottom of my water, but actually it's two pieces of tape holding it onto my drawing table because my drawing table is a little bit of an angle and I don't want to have the water be flying down into my lap. I also have some needed erasers here if you need to erase anything. The good thing about watercolor though is your pencil lines will basically erase after you're done um, painting. That's, that's kind of weird how that happens, but you can erase um, a lot of your pencil lines if you need to. I don't ever erase because somehow they kind of disappear anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. The other thing is if you have a needed eraser and you have too much graphite on your paper, you can roll the needed eraser up and down the paper. I learned this in art school a long time ago and forgot about it until my colleague friend Dave Becker told me about it or reminded me about it. So if you go like that, the graphite will come off, but the drawing will still stay. You're not really erasing it. You're just picking up the graphite with this kneaded eraser. So I will begin the painting. I'm going to talk a little bit about brushes. In the water here, I have a one inch brush that I usually use for backgrounds and I do, I, it comes to a really nice edge. So if you ever want to edge something and paint some small lines in something, this edge right here, just by putting it down on your paper will create a really nice edge. And I can show you that. I think I'll be showing you that in this painting. I'm not sure. I'm also probably going to use this as my fine brush. I don't even know what number it is right now because every number on every brush is different. But I'm going to be using this brush, which I almost always use in every painting at some point when I start to go down from the one inch brush, this is one that I'll normally use. So I'll put those aside because I won't be using them right now, but I'm going to wet the paper right now. So all you gotta do is just wet it really well. Make sure it's nice and glossy wet. And I'm using a um, quarter inch of a sheet of paper, which is not as small as we use in the class usually. We usually use an eighth of a sheet. Eighth of a sheet would cut it in half about right here. I'm doing a quarter sheet just because the bird was whiter um, than I thought he would be, so I ended up going with, half, with a quarter sheet instead of an eighth of a sheet. Hopefully you can see me doing this, and you can see that the paper is super wet. Um, I'll try to remind you what colors I'm dipping into and how I'm doing them. Try not to get the bird wet because my drawing table is a little bit of an angle. The water's gonna start running down a little bit, but that's one of the things I'll just have to deal with. Um, so I'm gonna start with some olive and some sap in the background. 
And what you want to do when you go wet on wet is you let the water and the paint and the paper all work together. So olive and sap right now. And you don't have to get the exact colors that are in here. You're just trying to get some greens in there for now. And that's okay. Um, not to have to get all the colors in there right away. Because we can always go back to it when it dries. But whatever you do right now in this background color while it's wet is pretty much what we're going to keep. We're not going to go back into it much because this um, color that we're putting in here now, you're going to want to keep it the way it looks. The flowing of the colors into the water, the flowing of the colors into the paper. I'm adding a little bit of Prussian now to it just to, you know, make it a little bit more interesting. Um, there's a little bit of brown. You can either use your burnt sienna or burnt umber up in the top up here where this little island thing is. I'm not being too worried about that right now. I'm going to go with a little bit of yellow ochre now down through here just to lighten it up a little because you can see it gets a little lighter and browner but I don't want to get too light. I just want to get a little warmer by putting in that yellow ochre. It's drizzling down the paper because it is slanted but that's okay. We'll work with it. Once this all dries I won't have to worry about that anymore and I might just angle the paper up a little bit. So now I'm going to take and go with a light blue to get that water, the um, water a little lighter. I would say horizon blue or a very soft version of Prussian that will both do the same thing. Um, Prussian is really nice for water too. And remember, it will dry a lot lighter, even if I don't use a hairdryer. I'm not going to use a hairdryer because a hairdryer would be um, making it dry too fast and dry a lot lighter. I'm simply going to let it dry on its own. And then we have some puddles here that I don't like too much, so I'm going to dab them. If you see those dark puddles between the wings, I'm going to dab those with a paper towel because I do not want them to stay there. They'll end up dripping into the Bird, you won't have that issue if you are painting on a flat surface. The only reason I'm having that happen is because I'm painting on an angled surface, which I don't usually do, and I can raise it up a little bit probably. I might end up leveling the board um, later. Anyway, that's the first step. So just stop and let it dry, or if you want to take a hairdryer to it, you can, but hairdryer will do some weird things to it. You won't love it. Um, so. Um, it will make it dry a lot lighter and also can move the paint around if the paint's not quite dry. So I'm sure you know that from working in the classroom, what that's like. Anyway, that's it for now and we'll be doing the rest of it in a couple minutes. So I'm back. Um, this is all dry now. Make sure it's totally dry. And the way you test it for dryness is to feel it with the back of your hand. If the back of your hand shows that it's warm, and not cold, then it's probably dry. Um, so now you can see some of this uh, darker color in here around him, because he's not totally white. You know, white birds aren't really white. We know that, we've learned that before. There's white in the top of his head. There's white on the tips of his wings. There's white in his little legs. And some white here, but the rest is kind of other colors. So you can probably use anything. I'm gonna go with my next smallest brush now, which is this round brush. It's kind of big. You can see it in the size of my finger. Um, so maybe some purple. So I'm going to mix um, some opera. So you're getting into some opera here. And some ultramarine, which is over here. Ultramarine blue is your darkest blue. Get a little bit on the purple side. If it ends up being too purpley, we can always tone it down later. So I'm going to go under this wing area here and under this wing area here and I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I'm going to bring it all the way down to over here by his body where you can see that it's a little darker. And if you get your brush wet, get all the color off of it. 
you can kind of blend your color down into the white a little bit so that it's not doesn't have a hard edge. You don't want to create a hard edge. So just kind of do that to it. Get your um your brush wet with no color and just kind of fluff it into the white and that way you won't have a hard edge. That helps a lot. I'm going to take a little bit more purple, put it over here under this left wing over here, which is really actually his right wing, but we're going to talk about it from our perspective. And then his body is lighter than that area on his wing. So we're going to kind of just bring that down. You can see it. The color kind of comes down here and here a little bit. Um, so we're going to just get some color in there. So we're not going to be working with just white. And again, I'm going to get the brush wet, dry it off a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure that I don't have a super hard edge that's created. And if a hard edge starts to form, you can always take a piece of paper towel. Have paper towels near you, which I don't right now, which is not smart, but I will have some more later. Um, and you can just dab it with a paper towel. Now remember that we don't do any of the detail work until all this undercolor, all the preliminary base colors are done. I'm going to go with a little bit of blue in through here under his head. It's a little bit bluer than the purple. Might even add a little bit of brown to gray it down a little bit. Bring it down to this area here which kind of goes across his chest and creates a little bit of a dark area there. Again if you think this is a little bit of the wrong color we can always go back and um, we can add a little bit more color or we can add a little bit um, of a brownish color, darken it a little, we can do almost anything. I'm looking for the brush I just lost. Um, anyway, I need a smaller brush right now, so I'm gonna grab a smaller one, which is this one, and you can see the size of my fingertip. It's, not, it's a really long brush, but it's not a real big tip on it. Um, so then, let's say we're going to go around his legs. I'm, I'm going to mix a little bit of brown and blue to make a little bit of a grayish color. So the brown and blue would be ultramarine, blue, and burnt umber. So let's get into this area here. Let's go down over here a little bit. We're even going to come up down through here just to darken it up a little bit. So we're starting to see some of those darks a little more clearly now. Once you get those lighter colors in there, you can see that there's some darks that you need to fill in. And by going around the legs, you're actually going to create that lighter area by keeping it white. Again, I'm taking a little bit of water and I am just softening the edges so that I don't have so much edge to worry about. So it's getting a little bit later in the evening and my light source from my window is starting to go away, but hopefully the color hasn't changed too much for you. I've started to put a little bit of dark under his wing because as you can see, there's a little of this dark right here, so pay attention to that. Pay attention to this dark here. And like underneath his beak, there's a shadow on his neck from his beak. So I'm going to start to do some of that. Um, I'm going to take a bluish purple, which I've taken, added a little bit more bluish brown to my um, purple. And I'm going to put it under here, just with this little brush. And it will probably end up getting a little darker later, but right now that just kind of is a guide to show me how it's going to go. And then um, under here as well, then we're going to start to get some of those feathers on his wings too. I want to get a little darker down here because that seemed to fade a little bit from when um, I last painted it. I want to make sure I get this down here. And see, now he's starting to shape up a little bit. This area under his head that his beak makes and there's a little bit of a 
um, shadow there. I just want to make sure that stays. So now he's starting to get some dimension to him. He's looking better. Um, this here, little triangular area of a little bit more dark. Um, I want to get that a little darker, but not too dark. So I want to have it have a soft edge still. You can see that shadow around him, and it kind of goes around his whole um, body here. So yeah, to keep him, not too dark though, because you want to keep the highlights. So look for the highlights. If you need to use maskoid, you can. I did not in this particular piece because I didn't think it would need it. You can kind of just judge where the um, darker parts are. And, you know, like right through here. And maybe a little darker through here. You just want to give his wings some nice dimension because the underside of them does have that dimension on him. So he's starting to shape up. Um, we're gonna end up putting a little bit more, maybe we'll get a little bit more brownish yellow through here. Cause there's a lot of purple, but I'm seeing some browner colors too, which will add some color to him. Cause you know, like I said, birds are not, white birds are not really white, even though they look white. There's a lot of other colors that are reflected into them by what's around them. So the water, the green, everything just kind of reflects onto their wings, reflects onto their feathers, onto their head. You'll see it as I get further into this, how that works. So I'm going to keep working on this and I'll let you know in the next little segment here what I've done so you can follow along. Um, and I will, well, let me paint the, just to get the legs in there so you can see I'm going to do those. I'm going to take burnt umber, ultramarine blue, make a black or dark gray, whatever that turns out to be, and just kind of follow those lines that you traced from the actual photo down just right there. There's a little joint right there on his leg. A little joint right there. Can you see what I'm doing? Hopefully. If not, I'll get my paintbrush out of the way in just a second and make sure you get the angle of his legs right because that will show that he's about to land. And then down here, the reflections of his legs. You want to get those in there. Now I extended those from the, and I kind of altered the photo a little bit because I wanted to make sure it went to the end of the paper. So there, if you get that in there, that starts the reflection. So I'm seeing the need to put a little bit more detail into um, this guy's beak. So I want to put, um, I want to take some black like I made over here before for his legs. And with burnt sienna or burnt umber mixed with ultramarine blue to make your black. Get it real black. If it's too brown, add more blue. If it's too blue, add more brown. Um, and I'm going to try to get as straight of an edge as I can to get that beak in there. And then it comes down from this side a little bit. I want to make it long enough so that he looks got a nice beak there and his eye starts up in here just a little eye and then there's a lot of yellow in between the eye and the beak which I'll put in later and I'm going to go back in here and try to get some of the little areas of dark just to give it a little one little um, more layer of depth right in through there. We're going a little darker. And through here. The darker you make the stuff around it, the whiter those legs are going to look too. And it can change color. It doesn't have to follow the color exactly. As long as you get the value right, the color doesn't really matter as much as the value. So think about, you know, dark, light. Um, there's some yellow in there too. 
right through here, there's some nice yellows. So I'm gonna go through there and put a little bit of that yellowish brown in there, right through there. Fade to a little bit more yellow with just pulling that color with your brush. Um, same here. I'll put in a little bit of yellow down here, right around there. We'll just start to get some of that, those values in there, just so you start to see the colors kind of all combine together. He's starting to look okay. Um, I want to put a little bit of yellow through here too, just to add a little bit of extra color. Look at how that warmed it up just a little bit. Kind of cool. And through here, I want to do the same thing. Because, yeah, there's purple in there, but you also want to make sure you get the yellows. There is a lot of purple through here still that I want to make sure I get before we get in to start making all those um, the feathers. Then um, I'm going to work on the background a little bit more because I want to make sure I get a nice smooth transition down from land to water. Um, I'll probably put a little bit more dark up and through here, so I'll do that shortly. And I don't want to mess up my wet on wet that I did. The background for wet on wet looks so cool. I don't like to mess that up too much, so I'm not going to do too much to it. But then I also want to get some yellowish orange. So take some yellow, take some orange, or if you don't have orange, use red. Get those feet in there. It'll be easier to go around the feet in the water once you get the feet in there. That one foot, the this right foot kind of goes into his other leg there. And then do the same thing for the reflective feet. Really important. There. So that's the next steps. And we'll be doing a little bit more um, color. Um, in his wings in certain areas, like right through here. I see that dark, so I want to keep it, try to get the value in there. Okay, so as I'm looking at my background, I'm seeing that it needs to have some revision to it. I need to get some more browns and yellows in that top part of the background. So I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna get some yellow ochre. Um, and a little bit of burnt sienna. So the reddish brown and your yellow peanut buttery color will help. <clears throat> I'm gonna put it in this island looking thing out here. Not sure what this is, cause it's kind of a blurred background, which is fine. <clears throat> now I'll take some burnt umber, which is the darker chocolate brown, mix it up in there. Put a little bit of that in there too, just to add some color to it. Let it kind of float in what you've already got in there, so don't let that get too dry. <clears throat> then you'll see there's the some green left right in through there, and then it goes to another brown. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with those same colors I just made with the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna. Come down a little ways, leaving that green in between. With the flat edge of your brush, you should be able to make a relatively straight line right across like that. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. Um, even adding a little bit of darker brown and a little bit of blue mixed to get some of the grayish tones up through here, right in through here, right at the base of that um, start of the reflection. Now the important thing here is to make sure that you don't get, you know, make, make sure you leave the details around this bird. So I'm going to go with a smaller brush right now. And finish this off with that browns and blues just remember browns and blues just kind of mix them up doesn't matter if they all match but you want to get in between these feathery things so it leaves some shape to his feathers you're gonna go about down <clears throat> to about right here with your brownish color because you don't want to get too far down into the water we want to start to add blue into the water to make it more um, visible as water. So this should work. Just go right in there. Get real 
tight with your small brush right up to that little area of feathers and then do the same over here now you're gonna want to I maybe should have put maskoid on this head so these feathers look more feathery but I did not so I'm just gonna kind of weave in and out of there with a brush and once you get that color in there and around his head so that it kind of looks like he's got some texture to those feathers Go back in with your yellow or your yellow ochre and just smooth it out into the colors you already have going on because you don't want to get too dark around this head because then it looks like you intentionally did um, draw around his head with the paintbrush, which we did, but you don't want it to look like you did. I'm going to go all the way down to his wing here, a little bit past his wing. Want it to even out on the other side, same area. Some little lines in there to start to look like reflections. <clears throat> I'm picking up the same yellow ochre, brown and blue. Gets a little darker right around here. Right around his wing. Then there's a light area <clears throat> There's a light, real light area right through here, so I'm going to leave that. But you want to get real close to his head, giving his head that shape, close to his beak, and then come down into here and try to get that little ripple effect that you see in the water behind him. Just kind of pulling the color over from the other side, from the left, left side, just to get that area of light back there. And we'll go back in with details and kind of go around his wing too, so not to worry. And this area here, I'm going to make darker the area between his wing and his head on the right side as soon as it dries a little. If I try to do it now, I'm going to mess it up. So I've done a little bit more since the last point where I was recording. Um, some things I've done is I really went dark in through here. I got into blues and browns, um, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine, some Prussian, and just kind of make sure you have more pigment on your paintbrush than water. You still want it real liquidy, but you want a lot of pigment. The more the pigment, the more contrastier it will be, and also you won't achieve those... Um, um, cauliflowers that we really don't like to see. So I'm putting a little bit in here. I'm going to go back up in here into this little island back here and make it a little bit darker. I also refined some of the little feather areas on his wings um, with just a really light purple. A lot of water in that purple so that it doesn't um, get very dark. I also did a few more things to some of the shadowing around his body just so that he looks a little bit more dimensional. And I'm going to take and get some darker areas up through here just to get that nice um, dark and light and brown. Brown and blue looks really cool together when it's in nature like that. So I'm going to switch between burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and just kind of get those contrasty colors in there with the, my big round brush you can see size of my finger that's the big round brush um and i'm going to go back in with a little bit of green olive sap um i'll show you a couple other things that i did and then i will take a nice photograph of this piece and put it on the end of the video too or i will actually email it to you with the link to this video so that you can see um, all that I've done um, since the last time I recorded. It's just easier to paint and not record and then show you some of the things I've done. And if you have questions, you can always call or um, email me or text me and let me know what your questions are. 
Um, I got a lot of blue down in through here. You can see that. I used my Horizon Blue and I took my flat brush, Horizon Blue, right here. If you don't have Horizon Blue, use a, a lot of Prussian with a lot of water in it. That will help. <clears throat> and I just kind of just really smoothed it on. Not super even brush strokes because I didn't want it to be perfectly even, but it does make a nice blue in this water. It just really makes it really pretty, even prettier than in here. I think it's more of an aqua color, but that's okay. Um, I also got the yellow right around his beak. You can see it in the photograph. You'll be able to get that right in there. Um, I'm putting a little bit more blue in here just to signify that it's water and then be about done. Um, if I do any more little details, I will definitely add them to this video. But for now, I think he's done and looking pretty good. So I think that's it. So enjoy, I hope yours comes out great. I'd love to see how they all come out. And like I said, any questions, just text me. Or if you're halfway through and you don't know which way to go, just text me your picture and show me what's going on with it, okay? Thanks. We'll see you soon. So now that you've done your painting or you're ready to paint another one, for next week, I'm going to be painting this. It's a barn scene. I saw it. It's a Door County barn, actually. Um, I saw it on Door County website. I did not take the picture, but I know where the barn is. I've seen it before. And they put a new roof on the silo not long ago. And I um, thought it would be a good one to paint. I will probably alter the painting a little bit. Um, Maybe put like a little path or a road somewhere coming down. Uh, maybe a part of a fence. I'm going to do some things to it. I'm not going to have total green in the foreground like this shows. I'm probably going to do some variations of golds and browns too. And then I will also send you this to trace from. Or you can shrink it down and make it smaller, whatever you want to do. So um, you'll be seeing that next week in an email. And then the video will come to follow. Okay, have fun. Thanks. Bye.